Welcome to The Weekly, a podcast brought to you by Calvary Bible Church. I'm your host, Jay Ewing. I'm on the Erie staff, Erie campus. We love that you're listening in today to the podcast brought to you by Calvary. It's so much fun. It's summertime here in Colorado. It's beautiful. And I have two new guests to the podcast today, which is really exciting. I'm going to introduce them in just a few minutes. Let me give you a hint, though. They work with kids. There's a lot of people at Calvary, though. But anyways, we love that you're listening in. Let me tell you, go to calvarybible.com, figure out what's happening in your neck of the woods here at Calvary. Click on your campus, click on events, get plugged in here because Calvary is on the move, God is on the move, and we want you to be there too. So jump into calvarybible.com. All right, today in the booth, without further ado, I have Jen James and Jenny Fleetmeyer in the booth with me today. Hi, ladies. Hello, Hi, hello. Jay. How fun is it to be on a podcast? I know, super fun. Have Always y'all something new? Have y'all done a podcast before? Ever been on a podcast? I have once. Oh, yes. see, this is good. I'm, this is where we should start. Was it a Star Wars podcast? It should have been. That would have been amazing. <laughs> no, I was talking to Sam White um, about oh, yeah. disabilities. He has a disability. Um, empowerment podcast and we were talking about autism cool yeah super fun so it wasn't star wars it was not star wars all right so if there's two people in the running for the greatest star wars fans and staff calvary staff one of them being jen james the other one being isaac sutton and then john boyle be like you left me out of the conversation (laughs) did you know you know we are doing the unsung heroes here at church yes we are and we got the video the promo video which is really cool have you seen the promo video this summer no you haven't seen it Uh okay well in boulder tom watched it the first message and the first thing he says on stage is that was shot in john boyle's bedroom oh no (laughs) it's all these action figures figurines it's so funny i have seen it you have seen that yes it was hilarious. I'm going to have to go find that. It's yeah, you guys are <laughs> great comedic <laughs> relief. So anyways, um, yes. So we had the ladies in here. So let's get to know you. First round of questions. I want to know this real, your real opinion. Okay. Not the Christianese answer, not Jesus. Cause you know, Calvary kids, there's a lot of that question. Bible that answer. Always, yeah, the yeah, answer. always the answer. Okay. What is your favorite Bible story to teach to kids. Ooh, that's a good one. Ooh, I'm going to have to think. Mine's Fish and Loaves. Fish and Loaves? The miracle, oh, yes. That's a good one. It's my favorite. That is a fun one to teach. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about you, Jen? I think my favorite, oh gosh, I just, I really like teaching uh, the Christmas story. Yeah. Um, that's probably one of my favorites. But then, I think that would have to be my favorite. Oh, yeah. yeah. Christmas story? Yeah. Oh, what about David and Goliath? That's a good one. That's a good one, too. What about the ark? I mean, I'm thinking about the classic children's church stories, the ones that we've heard over and over and, and have over. smelt the felt board. Well, mm-hmm. I do. Smell mm-hmm. the felt board? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm bringing back the felt board in preschool. Are That's you? amazing. Yeah, yeah, she should. Yeah, yeah. I do like um, Samson. Okay, yeah. I do like Samson. That is a great story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's so many great stories in the Bible. Like, Mm -hmm. so many great stories. Mm -hmm. And there's so many great stories that can be told in a fun way. Mm -hmm. And Calvary Kids gets to do that. Oh, yes, we do. More than anyone else. Yes, we do. One of my favorites is with the fish and the loaves, the multiplication. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is you put um, popcorn, just popcorn seeds. Yeah. Just a few popcorn seeds. And then you turn it on and it just explodes and it starts going everywhere and the kids get so excited. Oh, awesome. look what the miracle that just happened. Yeah. Or the Kool-Aid in the bottom of the um, canister of empty water. You know, there's no water in it, but there's Kool-Aid and you pour water in. Oh, yeah. And the water turns to wine or Kool-Aid. Yeah, 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 Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid. <laughs> or Kool-Aid. Or Kool-Aid. You know. <laughs> I love the object. Let's keep it real. <laughs> That's really fun. Okay, so... Give us a brief bio of both of you. You know, we're in the series here this summer in the weekly where we're interviewing some of those who work on staff who've never been on the podcast, Mm -hmm. get to know sort of the Calvary staff and what is happening around the buildings Mm -hmm. of either Thornton, Erie, and Boulder. Mm -hmm. So give us a rough bio sketch of 
how long have you been here and sort of your role and what you do and then more importantly, who you are. Well, that's a good one, Jay. Right. Jen James is going first, I guess. Um, well, I've been, let's see, we started, my family and I started coming to Calvary and Erie in 2015 uh, November 2015, and we then we became members in 2016. Um, I started right away helping with um, preschool worship, mm-hmm. and that's kind of where I've where I was a volunteer from then until let's see, and until um, COVID hit. Yeah, and I love working with preschool, elementary, middle school age kids. I think it's just great to see them blossom and grow and. Yeah learn and I love just being around like their their sweetness and learning mm-hmm. um so on staff I work in Calvary Kids and my big jobs are um helping with preschool and making sure that's running um smoothly and getting the lesson um set for this effort for Sundays and um, getting volunteers and leaders there and then I'm also doing a lot of the events. So Kids Week is coming up, and that's my big, that's my big whoop thing whoop. right now. Yeah. yeah. So we're gonna zoom around Australia in Zoomerang. Zoomerang. So my kids are already listening to it on Spotify. Good. It's amazing. Yes. yes. So I have listened to Zoomerang quite a bit yes. in the last two weeks. <laughs> yep. We did start worship, um, yeah. worshiping the songs yeah. on Sundays. And so elementary started this month and preschool started last month. Jesus is the way. He right? is the way. Is the song? There's. Or what is it? Jesus. What is the one that my kids know? The Jay, sing it. No, yeah, no. sing it for us. <laughs> um, <laughs> th- uh, there's what one called, it? I think it's um, The Only Way. The Only Way. That's yeah. it. That's the one they know. Yeah. Already. Good. That's a good one to know. Good. Shameless plug. Do we need any Shameless more volunteers? Plug. We do. <laughs> hey, I, this is not your podcast, Jenny Flea um, This is not. It is. We do. It, we do. And it's, it's, it takes so, so many people to pull off such an amazing event. And it is always a need to have volunteers who are excited and want to be here and just are available to be here um, to help our kids learn about God's word and just love on our kids right and yeah yeah unlike other vbs's i've been to mm-hmm. in past experiences one of the most impressive things at calvary for vbs or kids week sorry yes it, for me is that to see all the men that give up either their work schedule mm-hmm. or their summer schedules to be and invest in making little disciples because mm-hmm. that's what we're doing on kids week oh absolutely mm-hmm. and so i mean you know god bless all the women of our faith, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Over the years and centuries who've sustained, mentored, nurtured all of us. But it is great to see men mm-hmm. who will hang out with third grade and walk around from station mm-hmm. to station oh, yeah. and sit on the floor. They so. just adore it when, when, you know, even like the teenage boys or any, their men come and um, teach them and lead them and be group leaders or play outdoor games with them. They do. They just, they really... The kids really just love it. Yeah. And you ask them at the end of the week, was this worth your time to yeah. come and serve? Absolutely. It always it's is. one of those things yeah. that you go and going, oh gosh, this is going to be a big deal. And then at the end, it's a big deal and it's a great deal. It's yeah. exhausting, but refreshing mm-hmm. at the same time. Yeah. You will go to bed early that week. <laughs> oh. oh yeah. So we're your kids that, though. So. <laughs> so we're your kids. Yeah. But it is a, it is a rewarding week mm-hmm. to yes. be a part of. Yeah. And one of the coolest things. Okay. Something you didn't mention that right. everyone needs to know is the Christmas pageant. Oh, yes. That is my, I love that. Yeah. That is my favorite, one of my favorite things to do here. And um, we were, I was talking to the other directors mm-hmm. yesterday about um, what you and Thomas had requested as our yeah. as our show. We're not going to, no sneak peek We won't here. give it away yet. But, but we are talking about Christmas in June. Yes, yes. we are. Right here. Yeah. But it's going to be fantastic. If that's the one, I'm excited. I am excited too. So what was the one, the first one we started here at Calvary was... The best Christmas pageant ever. Which is a classic. It is a classic. It is yes. a classic. And I remember my son, for months later, would not go behind the worship screen, like the, the curtain on stage... Because he thought kids lived back there. Oh my goodness! Because that's you know he was so young and saw the pageant and saw kids coming from there and going there like it was home, and he really <laughs> wouldn't go back there. <laughs> that's <laughs> so funny. I yeah, love it totally. All right, Jenny Fleetmeyer, who are yes. you? Where are you? Where have you been? 
And where where, where have you come from? Hmm. Well, I started coming to Calvary on my first day of work, which was May 1st of this year, 2022. Uh, My husband and myself, and we have three daughters, 10, 12, and 14. Um, My husband's a native, but I've been in the Boulder area for the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. And I moved here right out of seminary to come and do college ministry um, at CU at a church in downtown Boulder, yeah. First Pres Church of Boulder. So I was there for about 20 years, the first half with college and the second half with children and families. And now the Lord has called me into the Calvary fold, which I'm so thrilled about, um, to be the director of family ministries. That's really And fun. work with a stellar team. We're yeah. so happy to have you. I, thank you. That's so so you get your degree at Talbot, right? Yep. In Talbot School, School of Theology. Yeah. What Biola was your degree? University. Uh, a Master's of Divinity mm-hmm. with an emphasis in evangelism and discipleship. Wow. Yes. So Master's of Divinity, you have to have Greek and Hebrew. And Hebrew, that's right. Oh. You I survived. called Hebrew dots and squiggles. Oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. pretty much what it is. I really liked Greek. Yeah. I didn't so much like Hebrew. Okay. Yes. A New Testament gal. Yes. Not an Old Testament gal. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it involves popcorn and Kool-Aid. Yeah, totally. That's really fun. Uh-huh. That's really fun. Mm-hmm. We're so glad you're here. And now, yeah. you, the age of your kids are? 10, 12, and 14. Oh, Three man. girls. Three girls. Two middle school, one high school. So does Chad have a best friend that he hangs out with in the <laughs> poor girl our, house? He has our male dog. Yeah. Perfect. Five. Yes. <laughs> Chad does women's ministry. Yeah, totally. <laughs> he does never he never gets a say in what type of movie y'all watch, uh, well, right? Well, you know. He does have influence. <laughs> he does? Oh yes, he does. Good. That's really good. I know. He's an awesome girl dad. Yeah, that's awesome. He's fantastic. And We're loves super girls. glad you're here. Thank you. Yeah. If we think about Calvary Kids, which used to be what did we call it long ago? Kids Quest. Kids Quest. Yeah. I can't I don't even remember that name. I know. It's it was been pre COVID now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've talked about, you know, the generations we've seen God use this ministry starting in the Boulder campus long ago. Mm. Um what do you think God is up to among us now in Calvary Kids in the larger, like, 2022, we're heading into 2023, the, you know, we've been through a pandemic. Mm-hmm. What do you think God is up to among us here in Calvary Kids? Mm. I know something that jumps out to me pretty quickly. I think in COVID, everything became home base. Mm-hmm. And initially with churches, it was like, oh, wow, how are we going to, how are we going to feed the people? How are we going to lead them to the trough to enjoy God's word and grow continually when they're at home? And for children and family, it was this aha moment of like opportunity because that's really what we want to be primary. Mm -hmm. So wanting to put tools and resources, inspire, equip, and support families to do church at home. Mm -hmm. And now that we're back in the church a lot, most, you know, most people are coming back. The idea of wanting to keep the momentum going Mm -hmm. of filling that home with opportunity for parents to know I can do this at home also. And I want to do it. And in fact, it's the most strategic place for God to do his mighty work. Mm -hmm. I heard the statistic that was the church on average has about 40 hours a year with a child to influence them for Jesus. But the home has 3000. So when you think about what's the most strategic place to be focused and equipped, yes, do excellent ministry when we're on campus, Mm -hmm. but the best is to try and equip the parents to be the primary. So I think that's, uh, it has momentum and it's something that we want to continue to prioritize. And one of the things that energizes me is to come alongside families um, in a real fun, meaningful way Mm -hmm. um, to put it, tee them up. Yeah, that's really good. Mm -hmm. So that's one. Yeah, that's one very have our kids. It, it's such an important aspect too. Like mm-hmm. you were saying, like, yeah, we get them maybe 40 hours. Mm-hmm. It's not very long. That's mm-hmm. not very long, Mm-mm. especially when you count snack time. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> and we right. got to count snack time. That's true. Yeah. But yeah, I, I would really love to encourage parents more and equip them mm-hmm. to feel like, yes, we can do this at home too. Mm-hmm. We've got this. Mm-hmm. And honestly, if you start them um, when they're babies, preschool, they'll have this rhythm. We can have this rhythm that's already built in so that as we continue to go and life gets more and more full, there's already a rhythm that's kind of in the mix. Yeah. Right. Totally. Mm -hmm. Spiritual things, very practical, practical Mm -hmm. things, very spiritual, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's like the balancing of parental Mm -hmm. 
raising of your kids. Mm -hmm. You know, another thing, um, when we were uh, discussing this at a staff meeting yesterday, it was apparent to me that what we are doing on Sunday mornings in the elementary age group, when after we hear the Bible story and we have some worship time, we invite the kids to be silent Mm -hmm. for about 45 seconds. And this is a room of 75 or more kids completely silent to listen to the Lord. It's what we prompt them to do. And then when the music begins to play over the loud speakers softly, they quietly go to these different worship response stations. Mm -hmm. And to see them learn how to respond to what God might be telling them or what the Holy Spirit might be prompting them to write about, ask for forgiveness for, um, think about God's character. I mean, we have a Scrabble station and the kids will scrabble out letters that describe attributes of God, you know, and you have kids saying unstoppable, you know, or you have kids saying um, forgiven or kids always like to write their names. So I'll come up and go, you know, Ryan, you are part of the attribute of God because you are created in God's image, you know? So you see these opportunities of giving kids space think about God, give room to listen and help them learn how to have solitude and be silent. That's exciting. And I think as a result of coming out of a hard season the last year and a half or two, perhaps there's a, an eagerness and a hunger to try new things and to dig deeper. And I'm excited to see what God might do in these sacred spaces that just giving kids opportunities to listen. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, no doubt. I agree. I also really like in our curriculum how we have um, made the prayer walls and the praise walls yes. for the elementary kids to use. And um, really the praise walls is for anybody, any family um, can use that too. It's out in our main area, just across from trailhead. Mm-hmm. And you walk by and you read those praises. Aww. Talk about being needed, lifting up any type. If you need some sunshine that day, you go read a couple of those and you're going to be feeling good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's amazing the things our kids see, notice, feel, Mm. and express, and then are able to praise God for. Mm. And it is just, that is such an amazing thing that God is doing here. Yeah. So cool. Mm -hmm. No doubt. No doubt. Okay. So as a, as a guy who walks your hall sometimes, occasionally, um, I, we, we have this curriculum called true curriculum, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. I love your area, Jen, where we see these heroes of the Bible Mm -hmm. or actually normal people of the Bible Mm -hmm. that God used. Yes. Let me say it that way. Explain what that is because it's in all three campuses. Yes. And um, I think it's a great reminder to all of us about what we're teaching here in Calvary Kids. Right. So in the Owl's Room, that's where we have our, um, our Bible characters up on the wall and they are in a timeline type, um, yeah. They're organized kind of in that. And so um, True kind of walks the kids through the Bible uh, chronologically. And so we use the the people in the Bible, the unsung heroes the, um, that we see, as to show how um, God uses them mm-hmm. to do his mighty work. Mm-hmm. So it's the story doesn't focus on, oh, this person. It's how did God use this person? Mm-hmm. And so those those people on the wall are the people God used and we will point them out and show them off and emphasize them. Um, um, Elementary does a great job of showing them on the timeline. Mm -hmm. Um, I like using in preschool, the visual and so showing the, showing the person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can be inspired just by walking across that wall. Oh yeah. And you're just like, Oh, there is Hebrews 11 right there. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, these Mm -hmm. hall of fame of faith. Individuals. I, I also think it's cool because you can be like, huh, I, I don't remember that person. Yeah, mm-hmm. totally. I'm going to have to go look that person up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no doubt. Mm-hmm. No doubt. So does true curriculum go in a yearly cycle, a two-year cycle? How does that work? It goes in a three-year cycle. Okay, so you journey from Genesis to Revelation in a three-year cycle. Yes, that is how it is supposed to work. Yeah. Um, And then sometimes it's like, wait a second, did we just do this story? But yeah. I like it because it goes in such a way where you're like, well, we may be kind of repeating a little something, but we're giving a little more. Mm -hmm. Um, 
So preschool definitely does two weeks of the same lesson mm -hmm. taught in different ways. Yeah. Elementary does a little more where it is single or single um, lesson. Yeah. But it, yeah, it does. It walks it through and we do is it's pretty meaty. Mm -hmm. We get in there, we talk about things. Some mm -hmm. things are harder to talk about than others, but it's, it's mm -hmm. good to talk about everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As you, as you look through Calvary kids in that curriculum, as you're familiar with these stories or becoming re-familiar with these stories over and over again in a three-year cycle, do you see the thread of Christ in those stories and maybe speak towards how encouraging or inspiring that is to like remember that even within journeying with people? You know? So it's very much, so true is very much like God focused. Um, and there will be a, um, a line at the beginning of the lesson, a big idea, a big of the idea day. where God is mighty. God is love. God is creator. Um, and those are what the whole day is about. Mm -hmm. And so everything that is taught in our lessons on Sunday morning points to God and what God did with, um, what, how God gave us Jesus mm -hmm. and what Jesus did for us. Mm -hmm. So every single thing points to salvation. Mm -hmm. That's how I see Wonderful. it. Wonderful. One of the things that maybe people don't know as well is the Lego wall. Mm -hmm. Jenny, yes. Jenny, can you explain what the Lego wall is? Because my kids love the Lego, Lego wall. Good. Yeah, That's yeah. great. Yeah, the Lego wall is um, uh, incentive, incentivizes godly habits that we oh. want to teach kids in the mor on Sunday morning. So if you bring your Bible, you got to go put a Lego on the Lego wall. And the Lego wall is like an eight-foot strip of you know, maybe three by eight wall that they get to put a chunk of Lego on. And then if they fill up that entire Lego wall, we have a celebration and yeah. we set them up for success that they get multiple celebrations throughout the year. Yeah. But if you bring a Bible, bring a friend, memorize a verse, if you participate actively or if you answer a question, well, it's an opportunity for us to reward them mm -hmm. and incentivize godly habits. That's amazing. I know. The kids love it, and yeah. we love it. Yeah. My kids will love it. Good. Yeah. They talk about it, and when it especially gets close, uh -huh. or they can perceive it's getting closer, there's a real awareness of what's going on. Oh, They're bringing yeah, 10 excitement. Bibles to church. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <totally>. <laughs> that excitement just builds and grows, Aww. and it's it's cool. Yeah. It's the wonderful. last one was a pizza party, right? It was. was. A reward. Mm -hmm. Yes. Great. Mm -hmm. That sounds like fun to me. Yes, and delicious. Yeah. I'll bring my Bible to get a Lego. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Good for you. Yes. Yeah. We'll give you one. Okay, so talk about, you know, maybe give some insight to how a parent can get engaged with what Calvary is doing, what Jesus is doing among their kiddos. Mm -hmm. What are some practical ways you can encourage a parent to get engaged? Mm -hmm. Um we talk about, uh, we've just created a, a card that parent, we can give to parents when they come into our worship space, um, meaning the worship center with their children, because that's a real exciting thing, is to, yes, have your kids come to Sunday school, but something happens pretty uh, beautifully when you worship alongside your child, even in big church, what we used to call it, right, with our, yeah. with our littles, and um, an opportunity to, for parents to worship alongside their kids, for kids to see their parents' worship is pretty powerful. Absolutely. Seeing parents um, stand in worship, seeing parents open up their Bibles, seeing parents listen and focus on something bigger than them. Um, but as far as in Calvary kids, I think we would love parents to be regularly, obviously, praying daily for their children, opening up their Bible on a regular basis with their kids, I would say every day, but that seems like a lot. We just say regularly open up your Bible with your kids, but daily pray for your kids. Get involved in their classroom. Get involved in what they're learning. Jay, you know a lot about what's going on in our program, not just because you're on staff, but I think your kids tee you up and you lean in. Yeah, totally. Which is pretty beautiful. Well, Calvary Kids gives me lots of great handouts. Yay! That make it really easy. Yes. Yeah, we give out weekly handouts. Yes. So as long you can as they make it between... Handing it to me and the donut I line. Know. Oh, the, the donut line. <laughs> they line. might, they might so get lost good. occasionally. Yeah, so the handouts are, they, we um, tee up families to bring it home and have spiritual conversations about important things. They're also fun conversations. Sometimes I just keep it in the car because we do so much driving. We'll just talk in the car mm -hmm. um, about what we're learning, what we're growing in. But I also love with True, it, it also sets parents up to pre-teach what's going to happen the following week. Mm -hmm which is pretty cool because, again, this idea of parents being primary, if they could 
uh, you know, tee it up a little bit at home before coming, that's always a win. And then there's follow-up Absolutely. conversations. And then if you do lose it on the way from being handed it to the donut stand or if it gets lost in the, you know, my car is, yeah, yeah, totally, yeah. sometimes yeah. you'll never find anything again. <laughs> um, we do have extras in the on our resource wall and um, um, by the trailhead. There mm-hmm. will be extras there. Or you can always email me and I'd be happy to send you an electronic copy or anything. Yeah, totally. And also another shameless plug, teaching in the classrooms like leading these kids, getting to know their Sunday school leaders. Mm-hmm. It's so life-giving to get to know these kids, get to know your, your kids' friends, get to know the other parents that are also leaning in in this intentional way, whether it's every other week or every week. We are always looking for people who really want to invest in this generation, planting seeds for the yes. Lord to do some pretty incredible things. Yeah, that's a big question I have is, what do we do if we don't have kids? Mm. How do we get involved at Calvary Kids. Mm-hmm. You want to tee it up? Um, meaning like you, if... If someone if, comes to Calvary and don't, they don't have kids, or maybe their grandparents or their kids are grown and out, out of the house, how, how does someone support and participate in making disciples? I think there's a great opportunity to do a couple different things um, within Calvary Kids. Um, we have people that will come in on Sunday mornings to uh, do Bible story telling for us. So it's our main person in the um, elementary age and then also in preschool that will teach the story. Um, we have worship leaders that would, we love our worship leaders and they bring so much energy and fun, but that is, those are great roles for anybody. Mm-hmm. Teens through a hundred years old. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a great opportunity for people to, really share God's love and their love with others and help build those kids up Mm -hmm. and give them that toolbox to be able to defend their faith. Mm -hmm. And also like the teaching on Sunday morning is wonderful. You don't have to have any, you don't have to do any work beforehand. We do all that for you. So you come in and you're going to be set up for success in being able to teach that lesson for the day or answer questions mm-hmm. or follow up anything like that. It, mm-hmm. It's a it, small group leader. Small group leader mm-hmm. is just, it, what a great way to like share your faith with kids and also share your story with those kids who are so eager to hear it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's great. That's really wonderful. Mm-hmm. All right. I think that's our time today. Although I wanted to spend about 20 minutes talking about Star Wars. I but do love that's, Star Wars. That's another episode, <laughs> yes. I guess, someday, somewhere down the road. Um, Calvary, we want you to partner with us. So today, do me a solid as you listen to this. Make sure you pause and pray for our Calvary kids. Mm-hmm. Um, get to know who leads your Calvary kids on your campus. That's mm-hmm. easy. Go to calvarybible.com slash staff. Click your campus. Pray for your Calvary Kids leaders. Uh, But you would just partner with us in praying for the gospel to, Mm -hmm. one, be unhindered, as we hear in Acts 28, but also that we can um, see God's faithful work over these next generations, raising up disciples for him, Mm -hmm. for the kingdom of God, right? Right. Amen. Thanks, Jay. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, thanks for joining me here in the booth on the weekly and Thanks if you ever have any questions for these ladies you can always re- reach out to jen or jenny or reach out to your calvary kids um person individual on your campus they would love to hear from you also instead of praying also for calvary kids we probably should pray for kids week as well right yes, oh we yes yeah because kids week is coming it is, it is coming and it's coming fast <laughs> it is fast all right thanks calvary for listening we love you See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye.